This is Stranger Things VR, the gamification of the hit Netflix series that places you in the shoes of key characters as you relive pivotal moments inside and out of the show. This releases February 22nd, 2024 for the Quest 2 and a pet sets for $30 US, and for this review, we check out the game on the Quest 3. In a world where VR tie-ins are often forgettable, does Stranger Things deliver something different or just more of the same? Let's find out. Hello folks, before we get to it, if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is appreciated, leaving a comment is always welcome, and if you haven't done so yet, a subscription will earn you one VB buck, redeemable on a Virtual Boys podcast near you. With that out of the way, I'm Ryan for the VR Grid, now let's get to it, shall we? First off, I'm a big fan of Stranger Things, and while I typically avoid spoilers in my reviews, there's almost no way to avoid some major plot points from the series, as key moments from the show are touched upon. So if you aren't caught up on the show, you've been warned. On that note, this game really is only for fans of the series, so for those curious about Stranger Things VR, don't even bother with this until you've seen the show. Even liking the show, I really don't know who this is for, as it's largely more an experience than it is a game, with the main story clocking in at less than 3 hours. You'll initially play as Vecna and learn more about his origins and the events leading to his transformation from the human known as Henry, which sounds more interesting than it actually is. The opening few stages have you in the Upside Down, where you can use Vecna's push and pull force-like powers to deal with the creatures that reside there while using your tendrils to latch onto the environment and travel across it much faster than walking. It's here where you'll battle the Mind Flayer for control of this realm by messing with the environment and traveling in and out of manifestations from Henry's past in this battle of wills. Playing as Vecna is an interesting take, but unfortunately the story surrounding him really isn't that interesting. There are 9 chapters to get through, each varying in length, with the rest of the game taking place at various moments throughout all 4 seasons of the series. The problem with this is that revisiting these moments really doesn't offer up anything we didn't already know, with a lot of gameplay elements being stripped back to a point where many of these stages play like experiences, not games. In one stage, you try to inhabit the main characters, which just involves using your powers to see into the real world, then entering their minds by pulling yourself into them, after which, you just sit and watch as events unfold without offering any control over what happens next. Another has you playing as Billy during his possession, driving along the road as surreal events happen to him, which is broken up by visits to the psychic realm where he offers up people to feed the flesh monster from the third season. Once again though, there really is no game here, as you just mess with the radio, stay on the road, and wait for scripted events to unfold. You'll play as Eleven in the final chapter and use a few of her powers, funnily similar to Vecna's, and visit a few more events from the show, but no matter what I was doing, every stage felt like it went on for too long, which is saying something considering just how short the game is. Even knowing the show's plot, what's here feels like a disjointed collection of seemingly random moments from the series that doesn't really shed any new light on what we already know, which is all hampered by the cartoonish art style used. There are some fairly violent and graphic moments in here, but making everything so cartoonish really took away all the horror out of these horrific visuals. Character models can look quite accurate or just off, and when you see Vecna through Will's eyes, he looks like a Disney Infinity version which removes any sort of scary aura, though thankfully you don't see him too much. I'm not saying the game looks bad, with the stages taking place in the Upside Down looking substantially better over the real world stuff, it just looks and feels like a downsized version of the show. There are some slick visual moments when you're creating tendrils on floating islands and whipping yourself through the air to latch onto the next island while fending off the various creatures assaulting you, but as I said, many of these moments just go on for too long, turning some stages into repetitive slogs. As a fan, it's fun to visit some areas of the show, but in most cases it's a singular area like the Byrus house or arcade where you can't move, to slightly larger areas like the facility where Henry and Eleven were raised or Max's trailer park, but once again, outside of fighting the same few creatures, there really isn't much else to do, making for an overall disappointing experience, save for the mixed reality content, which I was actually impressed by. For the record, while I do think mixed and augmented reality stuff is cool, when it comes to gaming, I feel it's too limited to offer anything substantial. With that said, that doesn't mean I haven't been surprised by a few MR apps, with Stranger Things VR having a fun stage separate from the main story. Basically, 
Marie sends you an experimental glove that lets you open and close portals to the upside down, as well as real world levels from the main game. Opening these portals could let creatures through, which you'll have to use your telekinetic powers to defeat, ends in an epic confrontation in the upside down, and runs roughly 20 minutes or so. The whole experience is engaging and a great use of the tech, especially in the way the glove is overlaid over your actual hand, making it look like I was actually wearing the glove. It's not perfect, and if you move too fast, you can see your hands as the game tries to keep the glove overlaid, but I was nonetheless impressed. To use your telekinetic powers, you need to use your other hand to highlight and grab something by making a fist, while bringing your fist toward you yanks whatever you have grabbed near you, and pushing your fist will launch it quickly away. It's basically Jedi Force push and pull, but it felt awesome to only be using my hands for these powers, while I took out demo dogs and demo bats with relative ease. There is a second MR stage, which is a little more than a stationary wave shooter, using your powers of course, where the goal is to get high scores, but I didn't find it nearly as fun as the storied level, but it's alright I guess. Fans of this series will be happy to learn that the actors who play Vecna and Dr. Brenner return to do the voice work for those same characters in here, and honestly do a great job. The rest of the performances are played by other actors to varying degrees of success, though they are used minimally so it's not too distracting. Sound design is also on point with the upside down and all of its creatures sounding as they should, with the use of powers and everything else sounding okay, minus one key issue. During a few scenes the audio balance is off and voices are talking alongside background noises making it quite hard to hear them, to a point where I have no idea what I missed. Spatial audio will also appear to be absent, with many scenes doing a poor job of directing my attention at what I should be looking at. Basically, it's a mixed bag when it comes to audio design, which matches the overall game I guess. One of the questions I ask myself as a reviewer is who is this for? And after I finished Stranger Things VR, I gotta say, I'm still not quite sure. It's definitely not for people who haven't watched the show, and even as a fan that was left wanting, leaving me to think the only people that will pull a lot out of this are the hardcore fans that just can't get enough of the franchise, regardless of the form it comes in. Even with that said, the asking price of $30 is way too high for what's basically a collection of experiences in the Stranger Things universe, so even if you are interested in this, I'd wait for a deep sale. I'm gonna give Stranger Things VR a 5.5 out of 10. A few fun moments don't make up for all the tedium in here, but the mixed reality stuff was pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to do all the YouTube things to help us out, and that's it for this one, thank you so much for watching.